Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and this is week 11 of the Stash Buster block series and the block today is called Apple Leaf and you can see it is a leaf pattern and it uses two colors and this is a 12 inch block and we've got some half square triangles and then we have a unit down here with two triangles and a square and I'll show you how to put all those together next. Okay, to make this block here, what you're going to need for your background fabric, you're going to need two four and seven eighths inch squares, and then you're going to need two four and a half inch squares of your background. And for your green fabric, you're going to start out with a eight and seven eighths inch square and then you're going to cut that in half diagonally so that you get a triangle and then you could just save that other triangle to make another block you're also going to need three four and seven eighths inch squares of the green and then you're going to take one of those squares and you're going to cut that in half diagonally and you're going to use both of these triangles in the block so those are the pieces you need and to get started we're going to make the um, half square triangles which are what these points are here these points here these sections here these are the half square triangles and we have four of them so we're going to make um, each pairing of these squares the white ones with the green are going to make two so to do that we're going to draw a diagonal line from corner to corner on the back side of your background fabric or your lighter fabric whichever way you do this and we're going to do that on both pieces and this is a air soluble marker that I'm using you but you can use a water soluble marker you can use a pencil or a pen um, you know whatever you feel comfortable with because it's not going to show you're going to use that to as a guide for sewing and a guide for cutting so now, now you're going to pair your a green with this and you're going to put them right sides together and match all your raw edges and then you're going to stitch a quarter inch away on both sides of this line so there'll be a line of stitching here and a line of stitching there so I'll adjust the camera and take this to the sewing machine and we'll start stitching those together okay I have my quarter inch piecing foot on and I have a cotton thread a 40 weight cotton thread in my needle and my bobbin um, you can use a 50 weight or 60 weight and you can use all-purpose thread you can use a polyester thread whatever your favorite piecing thread is just use that and I'm going my stitch length is at 2.5 and I'm just going to stitch down on the left hand side and then I'm going to turn this and get myself a little slack and then stitch down the other side And just trim my threads off and then I'm going to do the same for the other two pieces and do right sides together now this is a hand dyed fabric so it's it doesn't matter what side I use really it's kind of like a batik there's really not usually any right or wrong side occasionally you will come across some that you could tell that there's a right side and a wrong side.
Okay. Next thing we're going to do is to cut these apart right on the right on the line that I drew there. And you can use your rotary cutter to do that if you want or your your scissors either either way. It doesn't matter. I just like to do my, use my scissors because they're right here and they're handy and I don't have to get up and go to my cutting board. So doing the easy way out. And the next thing I need to do is to press these and I want to press them towards the dark side. So I'll lay the dark side up, press the seam as it's sewn and then press it open and do that for each piece. I want to trim off these little dog ears because all that does is just add extra bulk and I really don't need that they just kind of tend to get in the way so I'm just going to trim those off and just trim them off flush with the edge of the piece Okay, then we'll get these out of my way. Okay, now I'm going to lay out the block and I'm going to use my sample as a guideline and you can find the directions on my blog. There's a link in the description below and you can find the written instructions there. And I'm going to start with the half square triangles and I'm going to have two right here and then I need a white four and a half inch block and then I'm going to put my triangle here and then my other two half square triangles and then these triangles are going to go like here and here and then this is going to go here. So the next thing I'm going to sew together is this part down here, the four and a half inch white with the two triangles. So what I want to do is to sew one triangle to the square. I'm going to use this bottom one first. And what I'm going to do is to match up the right angle, which is right here. So I'm going to match that up, match up my raw edges, and then I'm going to stitch across here. Now I'm going to go ahead and flip this over and stitch from this side. Okay, so this is what we have. Okay, so we have this here and that piece will go right there. So I'm going to go ahead and press this towards the green fabric. So towards my darker fabric and whatever fabric you're using press it towards your triangle not your square it'll make the next part easier and now I want to sew this triangle here I'm gonna lay that here and I'm gonna stitch across here so I'll line up my raw edges and I will stitch that so once again line up my raw edges and just stitch a quarter inch seam. Okay, and then I'm going to show you what that looks like. Let me trim my threads here. So that's what this looks like. It's I've sewn all the way off the edge. So that came right there where that little triangle is. It went right off that edge. So now I'm going to press this one, this triangle, 
open. Okay, so I'm going to press that the way it was sewn and then flip it over and press. Now you have to realize that you've got some bias edges here. This whole edge is bias. Um, so be careful when you're manipulating that edge. Next thing I want to do is to cut these dog ears off and I'll just cut them flush like that. And the next thing that I want to stitch is I want to stitch this unit to this triangle. So I'm just going to put right sides together and they should be the same size at this point. And so you can see those are the same size. And I'm going to sew it this direction. I'm going to have this side up. And I want to watch this intersection here and kind of stitch right there so that I don't lose the point of that um, square there. So I'm going to take these to the machine and sew these together. So since these are bias edges, I want to keep that in mind and not stretch the fabric. So I'm going to just kind of take it easy and just go slow here. If you use um, enders, leaders and enders, that would be a good place to use those. Um, I don't normally use them, but this is a very good place to use those. So just let the fabric feed through by the machine. And I'm going to make sure my raw edges are even. And I'm coming up to that intersection, so I want to keep an eye on that and make sure I don't go too far one way or the other on that. see what we have. Trim my threads and we should have a square now. So there we go. And I'm going to press that. I'm going to press it towards the big green triangle. So I'm going to press it the way it was sewn as always and then roll this back and press it open. And I'm just trying to be careful. I don't want to stretch this. And if you want to use steam, go ahead and do that to help it lay flat. Okay. So now we have this piece. And I'm going to trim off these dog ears. Now some people leave them in their quilts and there's nothing wrong with that if you don't if you don't want to trim them off then don't do it. Um, some people trim them off at the end. So here we got this much done. So now we need to work on this row in here in this section here. So these two are going to get sewn together and these three are going to be sewn together and then I will sew this to this and then this section to this section. So first thing I'm going to do is to sew these two together. And then I'll sew that to it. So we don't have any points that we have to match on this section. So we're just going to line up our raw edges and stitch those together. And then I'm going to sew the white square to this one.
Okay, so there is that row. I'm going to put that back in place and then I'm going to sew these two together. And I'm going to chart this way so that my seams are all facing towards me so the uh, pressure foot won't want to flip the seams. And line up my raw edges. Okay, time to press again. And this is what that unit looks like. I'm going to lay this one with the green up and then press it this direction and then I'm going to do the same with this one I'll have the green up the seam the green part that has the seam on it and do the same on this one Get that a little steam to help that lay down. Okay, so I've got that top row done and then I need to sew these two together. So I'm just making sure I've got them laying the right direction and flip this over and then I will stitch this down. So once again lining up my raw edges right sides together and my thread tails out of my way here. And I'm watching my seams to make sure they don't flip on me. If you have a needle positioner, you can always um, set that to the down position so that when the needle stops, it stops down. That may help. Now on this end, Um, I'm going to make sure that seam is aligned. Because there is a seam that where they intersect there and I'll show that to you here. Let's see how well I did that. Okay, so I'm going to press this down and then since this seam up here is facing this direction I want this one to face that direction so I'm going to roll that over and press it this way and this is one where you have to kind of coax it because it doesn't want to do that very easily but it can be done so Okay, now the seam I was talking about is where this diagonal seam meets this diagonal seam. I was trying to get those to match up and they're, they're pretty close. I think they're close enough that I'm not going to redo it. So we've got that section done and now we need to sew this row onto that. And the only thing we have to match is this seam here. So I'm going to make sure that is nested in there real tight and I'm going to go ahead and place a pin and then I'm going to sew this row together and then we do again we have this seam here where we've got these kind of lining up and these won't nest together because they're pressed the same direction so you just have to try and work with that I'm putting I'll put another pin in there and so I'm just trying to line up those seams. I don't want them off like that. I want them lined up 
right on top of each other like that. So right where that seam is going to hit is where I want them to stay. So let's see if we can get that to work. So I'll get that stitched down. done let's press it and see what we have okay I'm gonna go ahead and press this towards the big green triangle and see what we get here I'm just gonna press the whole block and there we have our apple leaf block. So I think that turned out pretty well. This one has a little more variation in the colors in the uh, green. This is a green and a yellow. And whereas this leaf was all, these fabrics are all green. Both hand dyed, but just a little bit different colors. So there we go. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you try out this block. Um, I think this is kind of pretty. If you get um, some of your favorite colors in there, do fall colors or spring colors or, you know, just whatever you like. Um, I think this would make a really pretty quilt. Um, you can make it all, you know, each leaf a different color or, you know, you could just put this in with a sampler quilt or, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, there's a link in the description box below for the instructions for this block and there are each block in this series will have some written instructions they're on my blog and I'll have a link down there in that description box that you can click that and get those and it'll tell you what pieces you need to cut what sizes you need to cut and then step by step how to sew them together um, this block was a little bit more challenging because you had um, this unit down here um, you had some half square triangles you had to you didn't really have to meet match any points but um, you know it's just a little bit more complex of a pattern than what we have done so as we go along some of these patterns will get more complex they're, they're going to kind of be a mix of them there'll be some more uh, simple easy to stitch blocks and then there'll be some that are, are a little more um, complex so you'll learn some new skills so anyway I hope you're enjoying this series um, I'm really enjoying it it's it's um, been fun to pick out the fabrics out of my stash and uh, you know limit limit limiting limiting myself to what I have in my stash is has actually been um, good because I'm using up some of the fabrics that have just been sitting around and um, you know getting a little creative and learning how to combine all of those colors together to make new blocks so um, that's been good if you like this video i hope you will click the like button and if you haven't subscribed yet i hope you will click that subscribe button and click the notification bell so that you'll be notified when the next video comes out i do a piecing video every friday and then every tuesday is a quilting video so uh, i hope you will join me and i hope to see you in the next video thanks for watching for more quilting ideas, click on the video links, and to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.